Hello chaps and chapets, have you seen this? This is Mythic Battles Pantheon and uh, this is Mythic Battles Pantheon as is this and as is this and as is this. In fact, all of this is Mythic Battles Pantheon. I never dreamed a board game could be this big and epic. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah, um, there was um, Heroescape uh, before. How did I forget that? Battle Pantheon is a tactical strategic combat game where two to four players will have a Greek mythological god and they will draft an army of either heroes or monsters or smaller troops or a mix of all of them and go head to head try to wipe out the other players gods or to absorb the most on phallus to declare themselves the champion. The original Mythic Battles that was produced by Yellow was the same, technically the same game and it had cards instead of minis and a kind of gridded square board. Monolith games have come along and they've augmented it and they have produced hundreds of very finely detailed miniatures, hundreds of different creatures, monsters, lots of different boards and there's even scenarios, so you don't have to play these head-to-head -head skirmishes like trying to kill the other god. You can actually go on a hunt for flowers, you could go and rescue a princess, or you could gang up and do uh, a whole cooperative campaign to try and wipe out one of the bigger monsters in the game. Now, this is a game that you can't get in stores due to the fact that it's in a Kickstarter exclusive and for good reason. There is no way you could go into a store and pick all this up for the same price that you'd pick up the game on Kickstarter. Putting the price aside for the whole packet, if you just got the base game, you'd have months of fun trying to discover the game itself. Because, going back to the beginning, the game starts with a draft. Now the drafting can be quite complex and quite long. Uh, as you try to pair your chosen god up with the right monsters and heroes which will complement them and help you win that victory. Why is that? Wow, every character from god to monster to hero will have some talents which are special powers and then we have some special special powers which kind of tie into their life track. Their life track keeps obviously the score of how many points of life they have but as it decreases, so does the amount of movement that that character can do, also the amount of defense that that character has, and also some of the powers might stop working after a certain point, or some powers might activate when you get lower in health. And for me, that's a realistic thing about the game, which is what I like. It is kind of like watching boxers in a boxing ring the first round they're pretty spryly but in the 13th round they're not so energetic and punches are slower works perfectly in this game now also as you're drafting your characters you're going to be receiving cards which are going to form a deck for you and this is the core mechanic of the game each character will have a different amount of cards allocated to them. They may be three, they may be four, they may be five. They may also have allocated to them some act of war cards, which are special cards which are interjected into the game. Now the gameplay is going to be very similar to those of you who play Magic the Gathering. I was going to say Yu-Gi-Oh, but 
don't think anyone out there has played Yu-Gi-Oh apart from me. But yeah, you're going to be drawing a card from your deck and adding it to your hand. And then you're going to be playing it to activate one of the characters by either introducing them to the board or if they're already on the board, getting them to move or attack or pick up an Omphalos or do something else depending on the scenario that you're doing. Or if it's a skirmish, just bash the crap out of someone. And most of the time during the game, you're going to be drawing one card, adding it to your hand, and then moving one of the monsters with their activation card and attacking. Or you may be adventurous. You may spend some of these active wall cards to allow you to play another activation card to move another character. Or you may use it to draw more cards from your deck and add to your hand, which is a benefit as well as a, a curse because if your deck ever runs out and you've got nothing to draw from, your opponent will get a bonus. They will have the chance to, if they still have their deck remaining, take their whole deck and add it to their hand and then maybe wipe you out on their next turn as they have this plethora of choices that they can perform on their turn. So. Using your cards wisely and at the correct time is very important in this game. This game is very tactically built into this deck of cards, which you're going to use to your best abilities. And it's not only your cards that you've got to be worried about. You've got to be worried about your opponent's cards. You're going to be looking over and going, is their draw deck smaller than mine? Because if it is, bonus, I get to draw all of my cards. Also, you're going to be card counting. Have they already played all the activations of their god, which means that their god is a sitting duck and they can't move and defend until they take their discard pile and shuffle it and make a new draw deck. Hey, hey. but that's just another layer of the cake of strategy and technical detail that is in this game. But there's also another layer. Yes, another layer to this technically strategic, wonderful cake is the battlefield itself. Each battlefield has an X amount of numbered spaces. Each space has X amount of characters that can actually be in that space. And each space has a different terrain effect. These effects can hinder your characters. They can help your characters. And you have to be thinking about that while thinking about your powers, while thinking about your hand management, while thinking about your card counting. And if you're lucky enough and you play against a nice player, they might point out that you have initiative when they attack you, which means that you get to attack them before they attack you. Unless you're playing against a player who's not like that. And then you'll curse and kick yourself under the table for forgetting that that character has that power or that character can actually get a plus one in attack when they are in a forest. Talking of attacking, which is one of my favorite things, you get to roll lots and lots of dice. And unlike most games, that fortuitous god Fortuna, who's the goddess of luck, uh, doesn't have as much control over the dice as you do because you can get to manipulate these dice. You do one big roll of the, the amount of attack dice that you're allowed, and then you're trying to make a value of five out of these dice. What does a five do? Well, a five is like an exploding dice, which will allow you to get a higher value of that dice, because if you get a five, you collect all your fives together, you re-roll them, and you add the value on top to create a new level, because some of these guys have a defense of eight or nine, and you can't roll an eight or a nine on a six-sided dice which has a blank face. So yes, you can get exploding dice, but also you can sacrifice dice, which will then bump the number up of a lower level dice. So maybe you rolled lots of twos, that's not too bad. You get rid of one two to make a two a three. You get rid of another two to make that three a four. You get rid of another two to make that four a five. And then you can re-roll that five and you get one. So five plus one is six. You get rid of another two, you make that a seven. Doing damage or not to the monster or person that you're trying to attack. Incredibly fun dice mechanic, which, that's it. 
Uh, I forgot what I was going to say next because I'm just, it's fun. So that's all the mechanics and when meshed together they make this fantastic game. It is really profound and technically deep, strategic kind of chess on drugs game with Magic the Gathering card play and of course this kind of hero clicks, you know, uh, life points degenerating your character's personality. It all works fantastically together. Technically, it's stellar. The game production itself, all the components, the dice, the rule books, well written, the player reference sheets, excellent. The art on the boards and on the characters is stellar. It is fantastically out of this world. I cannot score this game any higher than a, a, a 10 out of 10. Technical score, 10 out of 10. There you have it. The only way that this game could be better in production is if if the, the, the minis were holograms and the terrain was 3D, and then it would be 11 out of 10. The only quibble I have about it technically as a product is that there are a few characters that you can't find because their, their card art does not resemble their mini. Some of them look like they're standing up and some of them are sat down looking like they, they're having a poo. So what do I personally feel about this game while playing it? Well, some of my experiences, the game setup can be quite long as you're trying to figure out which characters you want to be and then finding the characters that you want to be. And that can be a little time consuming as well as putting everything away. The more you got, the longer it's going to take as you go through all the boxes trying to find the character that matches the, 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 the character card that you've picked up. Your first game at this will probably be very long and very slow as you are learning not the, the mechanisms. The mechanisms are pretty fast and easy to learn, but it's the, all the powers, the terrain, and obviously you're constantly referencing the reference card, which is useful and practical, and that's why it's there. Now, I had some queries when I first started learning the game that there were some balancing issues, but I realized that these balancing issues were more to do with the players than the actual game itself. If you put an experienced player up against a novice, the experienced player is going to kick that novice's ass and um, have their ass constantly kicked. I've never won one of these games. It, <laughs> I find the game very, very deep and profound, and I like my games a little bit lighter. So. I play kind of randomly, I play, draft my troops a bit randomly, and therefore, obviously, I don't put my best foot forward while playing the game. But hey-ho, that's just the way that I like to play. This is a thinking man or woman's game. This is really deep <laughs> puzzle-solving strategy game where you are constructing the best army and then do, using the right character at the right time with the right cards in your hand to, to achieve objectives. And these objectives, you, it's not a straight line, it's not directly go here. The, the, the game goes pretty much everywhere after it's kind of very slow start and once you've got your characters on the board and then they start going over here and then maybe the action's over on the side of the board and well maybe it's over on that side board but then later on there's this bit that is a bit interesting as on phallus are, are being eaten or grabbed pretty quickly and then it's it's a bit all over the place but it's it opens your mind to a, a different way of thinking while you're playing the game this isn't memoir 44 this is something else this is this is bigger than memoir 44 this is bigger than anything that i've ever played even hero skip i love the idea that this game is not just a case of you're going to move this person here and then move that person there it is a case of that the game is controlled by the deck and it's the way that you manage your hand which is going to achieve maximum efficiency on the board and then there's the dice combat which is i love i want to take this system and add it into other games instead of just rolling dice and seeing how many hits i get i want to roll dice and then sacrifice and then exploding dice and whoa such fun the game can be pretty long you're looking around an hour but the game normally ends around the time that someone's deck is empty, it'll either end uh, a little bit afterwards or it may even end before someone 
finishes and depletes their deck. If you're playing a four player game, the game can be very long as it's like one person's turn and then the next person's turn and then the third person's turn and then it's your turn. And it's like these very, very slow procedural things which go through people's minds, especially if you're playing against someone who is an AP, the, the game can drag and drag and you're constantly just sat there waiting for your turn to arrive even though you know one of the players is on your side. This is a very beautiful game. The, the designers and the publishers have put a lot of love into this game and the theme, it's, it's a theme which I love. I mean, Clash of the Titans was my second most watched film back in the 80s after, um, after um, Jungle Book. Yeah, that's the one. You thought I was going to say Star Wars, didn't you? But um, this game is just bulging with love from the miniatures, the art, the components, the the mechanisms themselves. The game just comes gushing out and it's, it's, uh, it's just a, a beautiful piece of work. And then you get, if you back the higher level, you get the art book, the concept art and that is phenomenal itself and then you've got the role-playing game as well and it's it's gorgeous i am i'm in love with this game but i've had some bad experiences with the game i haven't enjoyed it i like my games a little bit more fluffy this is a very very hardcore this is very very deep um it's not to say that if you're not a deep player that you won't enjoy this game you probably will enjoy this game the more you play it and you build up your experience and you get to know the characters and the powers and you have this memory retention that to remember that you know this terrain does this and if I put that character there it's gonna do that and that's the talent activate that talent when you activate that person all of those things you've got to have bear in mind while you're playing and have this constant consciousness of everything going on as well as the hand of cards um, that unfortunately is not a talent that I, I, I have and, and I, I'd like to play really rapidly and really kind of opif, hazard, randomly. Yeah, so um, really nice game, really great production. Not really my cup of tea, but I still give it a 7 out of 10 with my BGG ranking, which means good and I'm usually willing to play it. So there you have it. That's Mythic Battles. Does it sound like your cup of tea? Hopefully this video has pointed you in the direction of whether or not this game is a game for you or not. Also, you can also, if you want to look at more of the rules, I did a uh, Kickstarter preview video, which you can click up on the screen, and that will show you the rules in depth, obviously with the prototype, because I didn't have the final copy of the finished copy of the game. It's up on Kickstarter very, very quickly. Uh, there's only about two days left. So if it's interesting, you back it now. Um, otherwise it might slip through your fingers until maybe another couple of years and hopefully they'll have Mythic Battles Pantheon 2 coming at you. So I will say uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, give it a like. If you know someone that might appreciate this video, share it with them. And if you want to help out, sponsor me, uh, you can go to my Patreon and donate some money there and maybe get yourself entered into my prize draw and win yourself a board game. So I'll say ciao for now. And please, please, please remember not to cry at the table like I do when you lose at Mythic Battles. If you fancy your chances at winning a copy of the expansion for Abyss, Leviathan, then click on the double back monthly video at the top. And if you want to find out more about Mythic Battles, you can watch my previous videos at the video below.